afternoon. Thanks for joining us Across the Fence. I'm Keith Silva. From floods and fires to torrential downpours and soaring temperatures, humans have been under the weather recently. When a natural disaster occurs, there's an almost immediate reaction. Learn what, to learn what happened in order to be better prepared next time. But can you do, really do that? Really? You can't cause a flood or endanger lives just to test a theory. Or can you? Our guest today does that repeatedly in his laboratory at the University of Vermont. Scott Merrill teaches in the Department of Plant and Soil Science, and he's the Managing Director of the Social Ecological Gaming and Simulation Lab, SEGS for short. Scott, welcome to Across the Fence. Thank you. Um, I'm sure the deans of Plant and Soil Science and the College of Ag and Life Sciences would nod approvingly at the introduction that I wrote, but the truth of the matter is that you spend much of your time playing video games. <laughs> And you, that, that you and your students design, so you're just not, you know, uh, fooling around. <laughs> Talk about the SEGS lab, what goes on there? So the SEGS lab is a very all-encompassing lab to look at human decision-making and behavior. We're really trying to figure out how our decisions affect the environment and how the environment affects our decisions. Um, we do that in a number of different ways, from the traditional ways of surveys and talking to people with interviews and... Um, and then use complex models to try to understand those. But we also do one thing that I think is pretty unique, and that's what you uh, alluded to <laughs> just now, and that is we develop these serious games, these uh, simulation-based experiments to try to understand this human behavior and how our decisions are you know, impacted by different contexts and different situations. Understanding human behavior through games. I think, yeah. I, I, think I've, I, think I can understand that. Um, what kind of games are we talking about here? I think when most people hear video games, they think of something they played as a kid or an arcade or something like that. So what is, you just called it, a serious game? A serious game is something that's not for pure entertainment purposes. So what we're doing is we're trying to use it to gather data um, and try to understand that, that human behavioral aspect. And we're really trying to put people into a situation where they feel engaged and they feel like it's happening around them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, can we use the word simulation instead of game here? Are these more simulations that people are doing, or is it just sort of a game like Monopoly or Mario Brothers? You know, I think simulation is a great word, and it's a word I've been trying to use more and more when I'm talking to people about it, because we are trying to simulate an environment mm -hmm. for them. And we, um, as I'll show you, I think, soon, uh, we actually try to simulate different conflicts mm -hmm. and so that people really feel like they're in part of that and then we can get a better grasp of the data and how they would respond in these situations. Well soon is now you have one of these simulations. We've got your laptop here so yeah, bring this over and show me what we are looking at. What's this game, I'm sorry, simulation <laughs> that, that we're looking at. What is this one? So, so this is a simulation that we just developed to try to understand how people behave or might respond to potential floods that are coming. And we're okay. going to put them in front of a bunch of different flood warning messages okay. and see which one prompts the most appropriate response. Do they evacuate when they're supposed to? Um, or do they stay at home and not evacuate when a big flood is, is coming in? Okay. Um, so we're trying a bunch of different things here with that. Um, and hopefully uh, we can see some real resolution on which messages work well. Um, which messages don't work well and people don't understand them, which messages are okay. good and bad in that sense. So a lot in the messaging here. Yes. And we've, on the screen, we've got a little uh, evacuation button of a little character running yeah. away. That's right. Um, and you get these different warnings. Some, you said, are flood watch. So if I'm a player uh, and I'm, I get a flood watch and I say, ah, we're okay, we're not going to worry about it, what's the reward here? Uh, do you get to meet the princess, get a really cool sword? What's, what's going on? So interestingly, we are trying to really prompt these things, so we actually pay our participants for behaving well. Real cash. Real cash. Real money. Real money. <laughs> okay, so, okay. If, so if they don't evacuate when they're not supposed to evacuate, there's no actual flood, it's just a flood advisory or flood watch, mm -hmm. um, they actually can make a fair amount of money, real cash again. If they evacuate when they're supposed to evacuate, there's a big flood coming in, they can again make some real money. So and it's... Yeah, that appropriate response. We were running through some of the game before we started, and one of the things is if you evacuate early, there is a cost to evacuating, so mm -hmm. that's where you would lose real cash yeah. um, in all this. And so you get that warning, and it's uh, if you evacuate too early, 
you could lose money. And if obviously, if you evacuate too late, you could lose money as well. Mm -hmm. So, right. so there is sort of uh, you know risk uh, a, a risk to taking this, and getting out too early is just as bad as getting out you know obviously too late. Yes, that's absolutely true. Yeah. What, why why would you be penalized, or why would you lose money for getting out too early? So what we want to do is we want to see what messages prompt the appropriate response okay. quickly. So if somebody gets a response on their cell phone or a text message on their cell phone and they have a, an urgency to that, that there's a flood coming, we mm -hmm. want to see that they can process that information quickly. So that time component is our way of saying, hey, does this work? Mm -hmm. um, does this... Do you, uh, does this game play on your, your phone? Does it, do you need a, a computer to do it? Any joysticks involved? <laughs> there, there aren't any joysticks. There's, it's a pretty simple design. Uh, we don't have it uh, designed for a phone. It's just okay. for, a, for a computer right now. It, it works on a phone, but it's really, really tiny. And you okay. can't really see what's going on. And, and in the end, these different uh, uh, games that you would be, the warnings that you would get playing or the, the whatever would come through on your phone. You'd get a warning. You even have a little cell phone simulated there. Right. Um, and you would sort of see that and see flood warning. And if perhaps you're a little bit more like me, you'd be like, ah, it's a flood warning. No big deal. You know, I still got my twenty-three hundred dollars in in real cash. I don't need to get rid of that quite yet. But if you're someone else, you might say, "Oh boy, warning! I've been here before. I'm headed to the hills." That's right. And and one of the things we do is we actually attach a survey to this, mm -hmm. and it looks like people's experience in the past with floods does affect their behavior in the game. How do you use these games to help? Uh, it, mitigate floods and natural disasters, what actually happens? Someone comes into your lab at UVM and goes through this and then you compile that data. How does that work? We actually uh, have a national audience of people um, participating in these games. Um, so we just ran this game for a, th a thousand people around the country. Um, and then we'll take those data and we'll actually bring that information to the emergency responders, mm -hmm. to the people that are helping making these decisions uh, with the new messages, if we want to redesign messages, but also um, if they say this is the messages that we're currently using, they can get an idea of how many people are just not understanding them. How many doors are they going to have to knock on to make sure that everybody is, is doing the appropriate thing? Okay. So with some messages, they say, oh, that half the people aren't getting this. Others, it's like 10% of the people aren't getting this. Having them understand that distribution can really help them when they're preparing. Are we talking about language there or just certain words that, that cue certain reactions? Language and what we find is these infographics work okay. really, really well. Okay. Um, could this, we, this is obviously for flooding, very appropriate for Vermont and uh, 2023. Um, could this simulation be adapted for wildfires, volcanoes, any other natural disaster? Yeah, in the lab we do a lot of different things from food insecurity, we worked on COVID, we worked on uh, animal health. Okay. So we've worked on a lot of different aspects um, of this. We've got a precision ag game coming out. Any sort of conflict we can simulate, again with these big simulations, we can start studying that. So wildfires, hurricanes, anything like that would be easily done. Um, the great thing about games is you can put them away. <laughs> so what happens if someone doesn't play this game or doesn't want to engage with it? Is that, does that go into the data too? So everybody we hire um, <laughs> wants to get the money. So uh, it, it's actually a pretty nice thing with, with, for them because they're actually really engaged with it. They're getting paid for it. It's they're part of their paid. job. So okay. anybody that doesn't want to play doesn't have to. <laughs> right, play. right, right. Yeah. But they don't get paid. Right. <laughs> um, how, how are you collaborating with emergency services? Because this is the other crux of everything that you're doing is right. working with first responders, working with those folks. So how are they involved in the development of this game? So just uh, on September 22nd, last week for me, um, we, uh, we actually brought a bunch of message makers together mm -hmm. um, and or emergency responders and people responding to all the July floods from the Winooski area and really had a, a chance to talk to them um, and hear about their experiences and learn what was working what wasn't working um, and in the future we're going to bring all our results from these games um, and the surveys to them to say is there anything we can do to help. 
So we're going back and forth, we're listening to them, and then we're going to bring our information to them. It's like you're a researcher. <laughs> sort of. Sort of, sort of. <laughs> um, were you a gamer growing up? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, so, yeah. so this was all... Um, yeah, but when I, when I first started getting into the games and science, it was all about teaching. You know, it's like, I, you know, I love games. So I was like, can we use games to teach people about different things? So that was a really fun thing for, for me to get into. Mm. Just to, to, to play those games and more serious stuff that's more, you know, basis going to be helping people, that sort of, that, that, what, what you're talking about. Well, a lot of the games that we're doing that right now are directly to study critical problems. But earlier on in my career, I was just doing it to teach people ecology. <laughs> like, let's create a cool game that has uh, wolves chasing elk around or something like that. So. And decide and figure out what the results of that are and the data that goes into that and, and all that sort of thing. Yeah, and how you could tweak the system to make it actually work or, or not work, mm. you know. Excellent. Well, Scott, thank you very much. I look forward to this and look forward to hearing what happens next uh, with this game. Uh, play on, sir, as it, as it may be. I want to thank everyone here at WCAX for making today's program possible. And as always, thank you for stopping by Across the Fence.